fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. So hey guys, this report is for August 31st, but first I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I work, I've been fishing for over, I don't know, since I was a little kid, but I've been working at a fishing store for over 30 years, and I get a lot of my information from me being on the water. I fish a lot, three to four times a week. Got friends, got customers, and a lot of the guides in the area usually report to me and let me know what's going on. So guys, I put out two videos a week. On Monday, my video is a video that's actually out on the water, different species, teaching you how to fish. On Wednesday, I give you this report, so it's very current, so you could actually go out and, you know, and put it to your use. So this report is for the 31st. So I'm gonna start, first of all, out in the ocean, because it's been super red hot for the last couple months. And it's starting to slow up a little bit, but they're still catching good quality fish. Um, John was out there last week and they caught, uh, he caught one over 30. There's a lot of big fish being caught. Tanner Care, he was also out there. He caught some nice fish. He comes out of um, Sausalito, and then John and them were launching out of uh, Berkeley. And they just head out the, out the gate and they went south this time. So they went down toward Pacifica and they also caught a white sea bass. So the white sea bass are starting to make their move. You know, they'll move into the bay and um, you can catch them. Not a lot of guys even know that they even go in there. But the salmon fishing's kind of tapering off a little bit. The best bait is tray anchovies, which you, they're very hard to find right now but the green label seems to work the best. And most guys are not using any Dodgers, Flashers, or anything. So the salmon, when you guys are putting your tray bait for salmon fishing, you take that wire and you're gonna push it up from the back till it comes out right at the nose. And then you gotta wire it with a piece of copper to hold it still. That way there, when you put your anchovy, you could give it a little bend like this so to make it rotate. So if you want to, you could actually watch my video that I did on ocean salmon. And we actually showed you how to put it in and bend it. But the fish are good size, so I mean, it's probably still worth going out. Bodega Bay, I heard they're still catching a few out there. Um, guys are mooching out there. But a lot of the party boats are starting to switch over to rock fishing. So that kind of gives you a little hint. So rock fishing is off the hook and it'll get better and better. As you get into the fall, the uh, rockfish move shallower, get ready to spawn, especially the lingcod. So like in, you know, when it's toward the end of the year, when the season starts to close, those lingcod, I've caught them over there in Bodega in less than 30 feet of water. So those are the things that are coming up right now. And as far as uh, halibut out in the ocean on the North Bar, it's slowed up a little bit. But if you're gonna go out there, try to pick a slow tide inside the bay um, guys are drifting anchovies but inside the bay there's a lot of undersize so you're going to go through a lot of halibut before you can get your limit but they are catching some still and i think one of the things coming up going to be red hot in the next couple of weeks here in the bay is striper fishing so a lot of the stripers that are in the delta have started to move out and um, they'll start moving onto them rock piles so all the party boats to start switching over and then basically what they're doing is using a three-way with a dropper and drifting live anchovies and when they get in there you know those party boats 30 people on there they'll come in with 60 fish and they're all 8 to 25 pounds so those fish I expect to be there pretty soon in the next week or two and the Delta is still doing pretty good like I said John he was out there just another other day and he caught probably 30 fish trolling deep diving Yozuris. And then when the tide came up, they started trolling shallow and they used rattle traps and shallow running Yozuris. And they had 30 fish that, that day and they caught them up to 15 pounds. There's guys that are fishing up north. They're also catching them in prospect. So there's still a lot of stripers in the system, but uh, most of them I think are starting to scoot on out of here.
guys. We're using Alan. How's the bass fishing going? <laughs> well, I caught a carp and a bass, right? <laughs> so, in the river, I expect the salmon, because there are so many out in the ocean, to start moving up our river system. The only problem is the water temperature is still in the mid 70s, so they don't bite. And when they come up the river, they just shoot right on up and they travel suspended and they're very hard to catch. So those fish will be moving up. Hopefully that we could get some a cooling trend here and um, we can put them uh, salmon on the bite. But if you want to go out, I would fish the confluences like the mouth of the American or the mouth of the feather because the water is about 10 degrees cooler. So when they hit those areas, they'll hold up and then you could actually catch them. You could anchor up with a quick fish or a flat fish with a sardine wrap on there and uh, use the three way. You're probably gonna need anywhere from three to four ounces to hold you still. Or you could take a, your jig and go up to and drift the mouth because it's actually against the law to anchor right in the mouth. So everybody's pretty cool about drifting and then growing up and drifting. So one of the things at the mouth of the American, remember if it's over an ounce, you gotta use a single hook. And a side wash and a three or four out works great. You don't lose as many fish. So watch out for them salmon moving up in our river. We're gonna go to the lakes. So one of the things that's been red hot this year is kokanee fishing. We've been um, smashing them. You could still go and catch a lot of them. If you were to ask me, hey, where would you go right now? I would tell you go to Stampede. Stampede is still producing a lot of fish in that 14 to 17 inch. They're starting to turn, especially the males. You can tell there's no scales on the, on the males. They get that little hook nose on them. But the meat's still bright red, so they're still very good to smoke or you can eat them. But there, that lake is still on fire and you want to fish anywhere from 70 to 95 feet. And I would head toward the dam. So we have Party, we have uh, New Malonis, um, Bullards, they are slowing down a little bit. Um, Bullards Bar, you could catch easy limits there. The fish are a little bit smaller, they're about 10 to 12 inches and you're allowed 10 there. So that's a good lake to go to. So I would tell you, I would go to Stampede or Bullards. Trout fishing. All the local lakes around here in the mother load have kind of slowed down a little bit, I think because of the high temperature and the water, what lakes are falling and, you know, it's just been a little bit tough. So I would head up to the Sierras. You know, you could go up to Ice House, you can go up to any of the lakes in the Sierras and, and probably catch trout. I would probably, if you're fishing off the bank, I would probably fish by the dam because that's your deepest area and I would use power bait. Or you could put a little marshmallow in front of that and make it float up higher because if you cast out and you get a lot of grass on your hook, then I would put a little marshmallow just to float it up off the bottom a little higher. Power bait still floats, but a marshmallow will really carry it up off the bottom. You guys are headed up to Ice House. Check the regulations or call up there and make sure that the lake is still open because I heard it was closed, but I heard sometimes you could get in there and fish off the bank. So call there and then um, see if you could actually get in there. Landlock Kings. So secrets out, Folsom's still producing fish. Um, guys are catching them um, rolling shad. So it's almost the same technique as you're gonna put the shad on your hook with the wire and then they put a little bend to it. So somehow you get it to spin. They're fishing pretty deep anywhere from, I heard 90 to 110 feet of water, but they're actually catching some nice kings in, in Folsom. Haven't heard too much about um, Orville, but I'm sure you, know, you could actually go out and catch them. Pretty soon in the fall, watch out, watch my video because I hope this year Berryessa will produce some 
nice sized canes and you can go out there and mooch them. So go back and look at my archive and you'll see one that I did. It shows you how to put the bait, cure the bait, and actually go out and catch them. So now I want to talk to you guys a little bit about bass fishing, which is probably one of my favorite fishing. I've been doing really well down in the Delta. Um, I've been doing a lot of topwater fishing and catching some nice quality fish. But a lot of my fishing, you know, like when I go out, I look at the tides. The first thing I do is pay attention to the tides. And that kind of gives me the direction of what I'm going to do and what I'm going to try. But my go-to right now is punching. Watch the video I did just a couple weeks ago on punching. And I've been pretty much getting 15 to 18 pounds every trip out. So bass fishing, Lake Berryessa has been um, pretty decent. Um, Paganelli, he's been up there, he guides, he's been up there catching a lot of bass. Got onto an awesome spoon bite before we started getting this 100 degree weather. But it kind of slowed up a little bit. So then you pick up your drop shot and they're in 25 to 30 feet. And then um, he's catching a lot of bass out on the main body. Drop shot and little Kitek baits. During the fall, which is usually around September, October, I'll turn to Berryessa because it could be one of the best spooning lakes around here. And you could catch, you know, average 50 fish a day spooning. And it's uh, very effective. You can catch smallmouth spots, largemouth, catfish, squawfish, trout. We catch everything on spoons. So that's coming up here real soon, as soon as we could get this weather to change. Right now, with this hot weather, it just seems to get warm, get hot, get warm, get hot, get warm. And it's not doing fishing any good. It makes it a little bit tougher. As soon as that weather where you know when you wake up in the morning and you got frost on your windows and it starts cooling, the temperatures start dropping, then all hell breaks loose. I don't care where you go or I don't care what you go after. It's just a signal to these fish that, you know, they need to feed heavily before heavy winter comes. So if you guys send me a comment saying you want me to show you guys how to spoon, just leave me a comment. Because when you leave me a comment, it just gives me more of a direction to what I need to do and what I need to go out. Because I fish for everything. If it swims, I go out and catch it. So, you know, certain time of the year, certain things are better than others. and certain baits. I, I have a lot of opportunity to test a lot of new lures. So, you know, if you got an idea and say, hey, let's see one on spooning, then I'll do it. So just leave a comment. I usually answer within, you know, two or three days, and I usually answer any kind of questions that you ask me. So with this weather pattern we got coming up, we're supposed to have 108 and 109 next week. Get them frogs back out, because that's the perfect weather for for throwing these frogs. If you watch the video I did, I did a frog one a few weeks ago. Watch that video because I showed you how to do everything. So this coming Monday, I have frog two. But frog two, I showed you in depth of how I do everything. How I work it, what frogs I use, um, even how I trick them and weight them out. There's a lot of little things that you can learn by watching this video. Tackle tip for this week is on sonar. I did a couple sonar ones on 2D and I just did one this last Monday on down scan. I showed you how to set your settings on there so you get a good picture. And I also tell you, you know, what kind of depth you're going to use when you're using 2D versus down scan. So I want to give you guys two tips on your down scan. So if you're fishing navel water, meaning there's current, you always want to graph downstream. Always graph going with the current. You will see a lot more fish and structure if you're going with the current. Also, your scroll speed is the opposite of your boat speed. So if you're going super slow, you want your chart speed fast. If you're going fast, you want to slow it down. So just remember, it's the opposite. Why well, I got the little one? <laughs> well, you gotta, hold, you gotta hold your own, you know. <laughs> Still some stripers in the system, chatterbaits. Say something. Say what? Huh? Oh, I caught all these too. 
Well, he caught those small ones again. <laughs> caught them on white chatterbaits. I caught all these Look fish. What, <laughs> look what I caught. Look what I caught. Look what I, look what I caught. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. We'll take a vote. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're always camera shy. Gee, get off my shoe. <laughs> Every Saturday morning at 6.40 a.m., I'm on the California Sportsman Show with Ken Brown and Seb Sandrix, and we do a talk about what's going on in the area. I talk about AFO, and then every first Saturday of the month, I'm actually in the studio. So I'm firsthand in the studio, gabbing away with everybody, talking to all the guys, and let you guys know what's going on. From oceans, lakes, delta, we talk about everything. So don't forget, 1140 on the AM dial every Saturday morning. So Sep's show is from 6 to 8 a.m. every Saturday. So I hope you like the contents of these videos because if you hit the like, it lets us know that you know we're doing it the right way. And please hit the subscribe because it'll help me down the road. And I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next week. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.